check, check. Check, check. Hey everybody, and welcome back. We are doing Lesson 5. I am Christopher McSweeney. And I'm Tim Shabanowitz. Today we are talking about flow and lines, and we have a quote from Ellen Lepton, who's an educator, graphic designer, author, uh, and what does she say here? Yeah, Tim? so it's design is as much an act of spacing as an act of marking. Okay. So why don't you... Do you have anything to add to that? No, no because okay. I don't want to steal. <laughs> okay, I don't want don't to steal. steal away. So why don't you go and take a couple seconds, 30, to a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, and uh, think about what this means to you. All right, and we're back, um, and we do want to make sure that we don't give away too much because a lot of this class is you guys coming up with your own ideas. So, yes, yes I have my own thoughts on these quotes and things like that. Yes. I have no thoughts. No, I'm joking. I'm <laughs> joking. I always have thoughts. Um, All right, so let's let's get into this. Flow matters. It's important. Yes. And we want to make it matter, okay? So not only is something important, but as designers, it's our job to make it important, right? Yeah, it's that word we keep saying, intentional. Is it intentional? I think we wanted to pull this out as its own separate thing because when you're designing classrooms or any spaces, you're always thinking about the chair, the table, the couch, the furniture, the things, but you never think about the negative space, which is where how people uh, walk around and... and uh, uh, and they, they walk around and they go from one place. They circulate throughout the space. Uh, so you have to think about that while you're doing the positive space as well. So oftentimes in teaching, we kind of just think about where do we put the chairs so mm -hmm. that students can see us and we can see them. Yeah. Right. Because that is the order piece. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but we're not necessarily thinking about the flow of right. the room. Yeah. Uh, like where's pencil sharpener, the garbage can, how do the students move about how can they leave without disrupting the class if they need to use the restroom uh so i was in a classroom uh where uh the teacher like uh, lined them up all lengthwise down the long ways of the room so if a student was trapped in one corner it took the kid like going behind like 10 other chairs to get around to the board to answer a question a flow was not there yes they were all compact and they all looked at the teacher but it was awful as far as like trying to get around that space totally and we have um in some of our classrooms we have the table combo the old school oh, which gosh you those know things <laughs> uh and if you put them in a certain way you can literally trap a kid mm -hmm. like if yeah. you put them like four like two and two and like yeah, a group yeah. of four mm -hmm. like that inside kid is like stepping over a bar and stuff like, which just is a nightmare yeah. so um then all of a sudden our students are thinking about how do I get in and out of this chair rather? Mm -hmm. How do I create, interact with the material? Yeah. All right. So what this is all about, mm -hmm. and you can see we left a ton of space for notes and thoughts. Um, we're either going to create harmony mm -hmm. with our flow, yeah. right? Make it where students can come in and exit when the bell rings. That's, that's important, mm -hmm. right? The, the first couple minutes of class and that last couple minutes of class, <laughs> yeah. super important. Um, and also just movement within class, especially we want dynamic student centric classes. We're moving away from the stage on the s stage on the stage, stage right? on the stage, yeah. Teacher up front just talking the Charlie Brown a style. fire hose of information at you. Take what you can, right? No, that, we don't want that. That's <laughs> over. We're moving past that. Uh, and we are gonna create harmony. If we don't, we will unintentionally create confusion. Mm -hmm. Um students won't necessarily know where to sit. They're going to be hitting each other on the way in accidentally. Um, they won't know where things are. Like, imagine you're a student during a test, and you're like, is there a pencil sharpener? Yeah. And then, like, you have to raise your hand, and, like, that's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. right? And now you're not thinking about the assignment, and you're thinking about yeah. where's the pencil it sharpener. It needs to be comfortable. Yeah. So that's why we want to do this. Um, 
So we're talking about flow, how people move in and out, the mm -hmm. negative space, not just what we put in, but what we leave out. Mm -hmm. we're thinking about lines, either the sight lines, the physical yeah. lines yeah. for movement. And they don't have to be straight lines. They don't have to be straight lines. They're talking about, you know, curved lines, trying to, uh, how, how do people work around? And curved, curvature is, is, is usually, is a, curvature is in nature. So you want to make sure that you can emphasize that as well. Yeah. All right. And so let's take a look at some a, a quick design thing that everybody deals with all the time. Right. Um, like the search bar. Yeah. OK. So I put up the two here uh, and I'm Google searching. Right. What is flow uh, on both of these? But one of these works and the other one is weird. OK. So why would this work? Take 20 seconds literally to tell me why you think this works and why the other one's weird. And when we come back, we'll take it. All right, so let's talk about why this top one works and why this one's weird. It's easy, right? It's kind of like order of operations. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> it's math. You, oh, here we go. <laughs> you type in the thing and then you click search. You don't click search and then type in the thing. Yeah. So that's that's part of what we do in design. Literally, someone mm -hmm. was painstakingly thinking through at Google and all the search engines. What should our search bar look like? And that's why they yeah. came up with that. Like yeah. what makes sense? Um, all right. Uh, it's like, you know, the people who put in milk first we actually had to teach my son who put milk he was trying to put milk in his bowl uh -huh. for cereal first oh I was no like, you oh. cannot put milk in first oh. yeah. sorry <laughs> that was actually not part of the video just made me think of it <laughs> all right so let's let's go to this next page and really get after uh a lot of work here okay mm -hmm. a lot of not necessarily work a lot of intentionality. Yeah. Let's let's view it that way. So again, let's look at our quote here. Design is as much an act of spacing as an act of marking. All right. So we got a load of questions here. Um, Tim, you want to talk about like give a little bit of framework as to what these questions are geared towards, and then we're going to let uh, everybody go into uh, work. Yeah. So one um, one thing I want uh, a helpful activity. Uh, while you're thinking through these questions is to kind of think about uh, the term user groups, all right? User groups are uh, groups of people that use a space. So when you're thinking about how to use a classroom, obviously you have your teacher and you have the students of that classroom, but what are some other uh, people that might use a classroom? Christopher, can you think of any user groups? Yeah, so like in my class, I have, there's a Tuesday morning Bible study that meets. Okay, gotcha. There's clubs, and I have two clubs at the same time. Oh. Pokemon, oh. so they battle each other, uh -huh. and then Rubik's Cube, and they're building Rubik's Cubes yeah. separately. <laughs> separately, okay. Um, so I have group and individual. Uh, we have parent night. So right? parents are coming on in as well, wow. Uh, we have the uh, my PLC, my mm -hmm. department meeting. Um, and then we co-teach and then you separately teach right a uh, my, totally different subject mm -hmm. so so that's just that's a great list of user groups for a classroom and you know other types of spaces have uh, have different types of user groups for instance if we talk about a restaurant right uh, a restaurant there's customers that come on in to eat at the establishment and they circulate in a space and then there's the people that cook and serve the food and they circulate in a different space, but then they're commingling in the same space. And how those spaces interact is dependent on how uh, it determines how successful that space is at functioning. And if it doesn't function well, you're going to know it immediately. You know, it will cut into profits and the likeness and all that kind of stuff. And you can do these types of things for like stadiums, for hotels, for hospitals, all these types of circulation matter. So what I recommend for you doing right now is to think about your user groups for the space you're about to design and rank them from most used to least used uh, people that use that space. So like your teacher and your students would you be the highest priority. Absolutely. And that, yeah. Tuesday morning Bible study, while super important, may, you know, it's, it, they use it once a week versus every day. So rank those and then think about these questions for each of those user groups and answer them for each. 
That's perfect. That's perfect. So um, if you are in class with us, uh, go ahead and do this now. Mm -hmm. Um, We do have a design of the day followed up on the next page as well. Um, This we'll all do together. But if you are following along in the class virtually or however, um, then do the design of the day after this. And you want to tell us quickly about this Yeah, this this is... uh, uh Star architect Zaha Hadid. She's a Iraqi uh, British architect, or was she has passed away, uh, but she her buildings were uh, are always have uh, they're all interesting for sure. They're all these buildings are interesting, but line and flow are critical. Uh, whether she uses curvature or straight lines to be uh, very uh, you know sharp or uh, intentional with the space. Uh, this Hadar Aliyev Center in Azerbaijan uh, is curvature, uh, intentional curvature all throughout. Uh, Every different viewpoint looks different uh, and how people circulate through there is pretty much seamless. So take a look at how she mixes curvature and straight lines in there um, and hopefully you enjoy it. Good. Well, we hope this video helps. Good. See you in the next one.